way of that all-consuming fire, I think they will be devoured. I didn't say they were going to hell. I think it's a dangerous place to be. I keep, personally, I keep my mouth off of God's anointed. In the Old Testament, do no harm. That's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. We're all anointed. But church, we're running short on time. I wanted to answer your questions. If you have any about this, or it just, just, does it give you rise to think? What's wrong with this picture? Why is it I'm not reigning and ruling as king if I have received a free gift of righteousness? If I'm operating under the grace of God, his unmerited favor, why is it I'm not reigning and ruling as king? I'm going to tell you so you don't feel bad. I'm going to give you the answer. Because, turn to Galatians. I want the scriptures to answer, answer this for you. The book of Galatians, I believe it's chapter 2, but I'm not sure. Chapter 4, sorry, Galatians chapter 4. It says in verse 1, this is from the Amplified Bible. Now what I mean is that as long as the inheritor, the heir, is a child and under age, he does not differ from a slave, although he is master of all the estate. We need to grow up. We need to desire the sincere milk of the word. You will never get the milk of the meat of God's word until you start to understand that Jesus has made us righteous, that we're right with God, Till we stop sinning because sin will eat your lunch and pop the bag. Sin is a diversion. It's a way of keeping you from focusing on the word of God. Your sin is ever before you. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. But this sin that's ever before me keeps pulling me over here. And it's like that rock in the field. And the more I try not to sin, the more I focus on the sin. I'm supposed to be looking at Jesus, but this sin is fascinating. I don't know why I'm not stopping. I don't know why I can't quit. I keep, I keep, I pray about quitting. I want to stop sinning. God, I want to stop sinning. It says, looking unto Jesus. Satan has us through religion looking unto our sin. Keeping our sin before us. The sin problem has been taken care of. Yes. So, Your relationship with God does not change because of sin. What happens because of sin, you use your life up. Your ticks are going away. Every tick of the clock that you spend focusing on your sin is a tick that you could have spent focusing on the, Je on the Lord Jesus, that you could have spent pressing toward the mark for the prize. Isn't it a prize there of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus? Instead of me saying, okay, that's it. I'm going to rule and reign as king in this life. I want to get out of the kindergarten. I don't want to be under tutors anymore. I want to grow up. It says it in Hebrew. It said, I want to tell you about Melchizedek. He said, I have a lot of things to tell you. He says, but I can't tell you yet because you're still children. You're still babes. 
It says, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again and again and again and again and again. And Sunday after Sunday and year after year, you're still focusing and going in. If I could just get some milk, if I could just figure out how to prosper, if I could just figure out how to get my health, if I could just figure out how to stop doing this. You would be better off if right in the middle of your sin you would stand up and confess of the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Even while I'm doing this, I'm still the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Until you get your focus back on the Lord and not back on your sin. You don't stop be being righteous because of what you're doing. But Satan has you focused, and he's done it through religion. And then he comes and tells you that stuff doesn't work. It doesn't work because we've never worked it. Then the last part of that over in Hebrews, it says, those that, that, that have grown this, that, 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 that have come from this, have exercised their minds. You have to think. You have to think about what you're thinking about. Why are you focused on the sin when you could be focused on the glory of God, when you could be pressing toward the mark? That's why Paul said he was a happy man. He said, I've died, yet I live. He said, I let that old man die, yet I live. Not me, but Christ in me, the hope of my glory. Remember when he said, that that I don't want to do, I do it? Because my body is at enmity with God. It's always going to be like a magnet, be drawn towards sin. But because I decided to grow up and I said, no, body, you're not doing that. I don't have time for that mess. Sin is pleasurable for a season. I don't want a season. I want an eternity. And I want to start living in the reality of it right now. I want to grow up. Do you remember growing up as a child? Wanting to get out from under mommy and daddy? Wanting to be an adult? I remember I did. Tired of mom and dad telling me what to do. I had a great mom and dad. I didn't want them doing that, so I went into service where everyone told me what to do. <laughs> But I don't want Satan telling me what to do. He's not my father telling me what to focus on. Comes up and he puts his hand around you and says, oh, baby, I understand. You know you got to get a little. Am I lying? Now you, you know you can take that. You know you, you deserve that. I don't care what it is, he's lying to you because he's the very one as soon as you take it and you said you're a Christian. He's on both sides of the coin. He's a great deceiver. But church, isn't someone here tired of that devil? Deceiving, keeping us sick and broke, hopeless and hapless? Well, it's time for us to stop Satan's influence in our lives, and it's time for us to stop this lesson. And we will continue this. We're going to continue. The Lord has told me to pull the covers off that devil, and I will, as long as I'm drawing breath, continue to pull the covers off of the deceits of Satan and what he's done in our lives. Glory to God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory, 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 glory to God. And we're going to have the benediction today from Jude, talking about our righteousness. This is so good. Turn there with me to Jude and realize that this is talking about righteousness because of Jesus. No one can even stand before God and say you did anything wrong. They will not get an audience. You guys know that that the king in the, in the, in the world, and we serve a a king that is much more royal than the, these earthly kings could ever be. If you wanted to ask the king a question, 
then you had to submit the question to his servants before you could get before the king, and he would only let you get before the king if he was going to give you a favorable answer to your question. Plus, everyone doesn't just walk into a king. So you know that when you get the audience with the king, the answer is yes and amen. And that's why we're to come boldly to the throne of grace because the answer to us is yes and amen. He won't say it to us if it's in his promise. Yes and amen. All of his promises are yes and amen. Isn't that what it says? So the only thing we have to do is find the promise. We know the answer. I'd like to be a king. He said, I've already made you a king. Can't do that for you. Right? We don't need audience to get the answer to that. He's already given us the answer. Do you realize if you're asking God a question that he has already given you the answer to, you are calling him a liar? If you go to him to ask him the question again, what am I going to tell you different? You're healed. You're prospered. The reason we should go to the king is to worship and give thanks. Thank you, Lord. I just want to get in front of what, what did I say? I just came to say, I love you. I praise you. I worship you. I adore you. That's what we do during times of praise. Church, we're so close during the times of praise. If we would live the praise... Well, before I get started again, we're in Jude, verse 25. To the, only, to the one only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, splendor, majesty, might, and dominion, and power, and authority, before all time, and now, and forever, Unto all the ages of eternity, amen. Glory to God. We're dismissed.